Mina, Ohio Gazimus, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Today, I didn't wake up uh, early today, I just went to bed at pretty much my normal time. So, coming at you with <clears> 1 <throat> Chronicles chapter 10. This video is a bit of a warning against disobedience and unfaithfulness to the Lord. Pretty standard stuff, I know, from the Bible. Um, hopefully, you know, it's one more message that will reach some people. Um, and it's honestly a good reminder to me, myself, someone who uh, is a leader in the church, even though it's just a small capacity, still a leader. So, for those, and Saul was the king of Israel. He was a very big leader. So, the higher up you go, the harder you can fall, and the more obedience is required. So, it's good for me to hear, it's good for any other leaders to hear, and it's good for people in general to hear. Verse, this is second, bleh, First Chronicles chapter 10, verse 3. The battle became fierce against Saul. The archers hit him, and he was wounded by the archers. Then Saul said to his armor bearer, Draw your sword and thrust me through with it, lest these uncircumcised men come and abuse me. But his armor bearer would not, for he was greatly afraid. Therefore Saul took his sword and fell on it. So he committed suicide. Going down to verse 13, So Saul died for his unfaithfulness, which he had committed against the Lord, because he did not keep the word of the Lord, and also because he consulted a medium for guidance. But he did not inquire of the Lord. Therefore he, capital H, killed him, and turned the kingdom over to David the son of Jesse. Now we just read that Saul killed himself, he committed suicide, but it says in verse 13, I'm sorry, verse 14, that the Lord killed him. The Lord took responsibility for Saul's death. The Lord put the battle against him. He got the archers to wound him. He get he put him in a losing battle. Well, he Saul was warned since he was teaming up with I want to say Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, who demanded that an actual prophet of the Lord be brought in that they may inquire of the Lord, but Jehoshaphat wanted it, not Ahab. However, or, I'm sorry, Saul. Saul, Saul. Blah. <clears throat> so, Saul, he heard from this prophet that he was going to be killed in this upcoming battle. He went and did it anyway. So, yeah, the Lord pressured him and the Lord killed him. Even though all the natural circumstances would show, you know, he just he made some really poor choices. That was God. That was God purposing and in planning disaster against him. So does he did he was he at fault for his sin? Yes. Did he commit suicide and his suicide is sin? Yes. But ultimately the Lord punished him for his unfaithfulness and for consulting a medium and not for the Lord. Jehoshaphat went for the Lord, and yes, Saul heard what the he heard what the word of the Lord was, but he didn't seek after it himself. And he didn't listen to it even after he heard it. So Saul was completely guilty of unfaithfulness and turning away from the Lord his God. So that is a very strict and stern warning. I don't care if you believe in eternal security or temporary security, whichever side of the fence you're on, unfaithfulness to God is incredibly dangerous. And if you do believe you're going to heaven after falling to that extent, if you're one of the people that do believe that, I'm personally not, rest assured you're going to be somewhere way down after you stand before the Lord. If you commit a, if you fall that far, I can almost promise you most of what you're going to be presenting before him is wood, hay, and stubble, not gold, silver, and precious stones, as talked about in 1 Corinthians is it chapter 5, I believe. I'm going to check that out real quick because I want to give you a definite reference. I could just say Google is your friend, and, and normally I have no problem doing it, but I want to give a direct reference here so that you guys can look into it right now. It is, nope, it is 1 Corinthians 3. It's 1 Corinthians 3, starting at verse 11 and going through verse 15, talking about the judgment of God and the goats over precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble that I just talked about. You commit a sin and you walk that far away from God, you're going to be presenting a lot of junk and I don't know if you, what you believe about heaven's ranking system or not. It, Jesus talks about them being the greater, about those who are great and those who are less than the kingdom of heaven. Google that. You'll find that in the Gospels. I personally also believe there will be a ranking system in heaven. 
Now, being in heaven is obviously better than being in hell. But we shouldn't be aiming for last place, and we shouldn't be content or satisfied with last place, even in heavenly rankings. We should be living all out for Jesus. We should be going gung-ho for him at all times. And to wrap this up, this is directed just as much at me, at me, as it is at anyone else. Uh, we all need to hear this, and we all need to take heed and be warned. Uh, and this, you know, when I stand before the Lord, this video right here, my words will judge me if I fall away and turn away from obedience to God. So thank you. This was a heavy one, but nonetheless, thank you guys very much for watching this video. It was important to get these words out. The judgment of God is just as important as the love of God. It's the kindness of God that leads us to repentance, and it is the judgment of the Lord that lets us know that He is God and lets us know who He is and what His standards are. I love you, and God bless.